Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Corbett Report Radio. I am your guest host. My name is James Evan Pilato. I am the host and webmaster of MediaMonarchy.com, The Real News Remixed, and I also run a host of other sites like CyberspaceWar.com, HolyHexes.com, and what we are going to get into here for what would be the eighth appearance on Corbett Report Radio, going over exclusively the worlds of food, health, and the environment on my site, foodworldorder.com. So I have a few things that I that I want to talk about and things that are actually important to me in, in my personal life. And I think those are really the most kind of actionable things that you can share with people. But first, however, I'm not sure if it will be Food World Order related, but I want to talk to John in Alberta. Are you there, sir? Yeah, um, uh, uh, I've listened to uh, Corbett for quite a while, and, and I am uh, absolutely impressed with his clean, precise um, reporting. Uh, uh, my, my, my question uh, to you, uh, James, also is uh, um, um, I don't understand why Syria and Iran, like I understand that uh, we have to, uh, not we, but uh, the powers that be want to uh, knock these uh, regimes down, but uh, but why? That's, you know, I, th- I think we, we, we need our, our man James Corbett here to kind of tackle that, that massive a question. I think myself, you know, one, I do actually have a, a kind of religious upbringing, and that's, and that's not something I'm really close to anymore. But I think having a, a foundation and a background in that can help you kind of look around at the world stage and go, huh, it's kind of interesting that these things are happening. I don't ultimately believe that it's, that it's all meant to be. I think so many things are sort of self-fulfilling prophecies. I don't think it is meant to be. But, I, you know, the, the simplest, silliest thing I can kind of think of is, you, have you ever played Risk? Yes, I have, uh, when I was a kid. And I, I never really played it growing up. I, I played it for the, probably the first time only a few years ago. And playing it, you suddenly realize that when you get to the Middle East, that you go, oh my God. This kind of is the key. And, and yeah, it's a silly board game, but you realize the way to win dominance is to control that region. So I can only, on a simple yeah. matter, say, ultimately, well, it, it's well, all about resource it's wars. It's no different than a chessboard. Like, mm-hmm. you control the center, you control it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can always win like if you control the center of the board. And I think ultimately, as we've kind of seen throughout history, you know, they'll, they'll, they, the powers that be, those, those interlocking families, those multi-generational serial killers, they'll fund both sides for, for as long as, as need be until they'll throw a little more dough to the side that they need to win ultimately for, for any kind of political expedience. So I, I think, John, we're going to have to save that question for the return of our man, James Corbett. Do you have anything uh, in in the world of of food that's that's maybe on your mind? Let, let me ask you one more thing. Yes, sir. Why <clears throat> why destroy Syria? I can't answer that question. I, I ultimately do not have the answer to that question. They seem to me it, it seems to be just kind of the next in line of these sort of instigated and again i'm not saying that these nations haven't been racked with problems for decades but as we've just seen them kind of go like dominoes over the last 12 months it almost seems like well these are the next dominoes that that our globalist leaders want to knock over syria and iran i think that's the best i can say for you John in Alberta, I, I appreciate it so much. We're, we're going to move now. We do have a, another call on the line. John in Alberta, I, I appreciate it. I don't want to cut you off there. But we have Mike in Hollywood, Florida, and you are on the line, sir. Mike in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, Mike actually dropped. Oh, Mike dropped. Well... I'm going to take this opportunity then, and, and again, my friends, if you want to call in, we, we still have 20-plus minutes in the show, 1-800-313-9443. But what I want to do now in discussing foodworldorder.com, the site I've been running for the last couple of years, specifically focusing on food, health, and environment, 
I want to talk about something that that is is sort of personal, not ultra personal, but something I do and something we do in our house that's amazing. And it's one of those somewhat simple things that now I kind of can't imagine being without. So I, I run my video camera, so folks listening on the air won't see this, but I'm picking up the very large box that we get every other week to our apartment delivered by organics2u.org. And you can see how large that box is. You, you could fit quite a bit in there. Ultimately, Organics to You is a locally owned and operated Portland, Oregon organic produce delivery company delivering the finest farm fresh local organic produce and groceries since early 2001. Now, I'm not on their payroll. I don't get anything out of it. It's just an amazing service that is so important. I, I've often said, you know, it's I, I hope and my fingers are crossed that a place like Portland and maybe even the Pacific Northwest at, at large has already kind of moved itself to hopefully be in a better position to whether all you got to do is pop on Google News right now to see that, you know, the engineered collapses well apace. And just as the towers exploded into dust in a controlled demolition, our world economy is, is being demolished in a controlled fashion. The exact, the exact weaponry on, on both levels we may not know, but ultimately it's enough to know that it is happening and you need to make some decisions about how you're going to avoid that for not only yourself, but also those that you love and those that are closest to you. So basically, organics to youorg is, is fantastic. You can get kind of different levels and different frequency. It's just me and my girlfriend here, so we get a box every other week. Now, I think, you know, a family of four, you can get larger boxes at a larger, at a larger you know, frequency and rate, but it's local it's organic and it's in season produce i i really feel like you you know you can't really ask for too many more things than that this service of course is not going to apply to most and many of the folks out there that are that are listening to this but if you are in the portland area organics to you.org is fantastic i would hope in any of the areas that you guys are in uh, around the country and hopefully even around the world that you can search for kind of a similar thing. Now, organics to you isn't, I think, what some folks kind of refer to as a CSA, a, a cooperative where you sort of pay in and ultimately then the, the, the fruits and the veggies are all kind of split up between the people that pay in. This is basically a service, so it's, it couldn't be easier. It's as easy as, you know, subscribing to Netflix. You get something new in the mail and you pay the bill and, and it's a piece of cake. It has been said by folks... In addition to, I think, Michael Pollan, you know, the author of The Omnivore's Dilemma and, and some of the other books, that eating local is perhaps maybe even more important than eating organic. So eating local organic is, is one of the best things. So I would implore you to look around in your city and your towns for something similar or even start to, you know, ring some bells and talk about maybe making something like this happen in your area. I think another company that that I did see at some point here in Portland was a big purple van, and it was called Spud, and it was a similar kind of home delivery service. So I would implore you guys out there to check out something like that. Something else I, I want to touch on briefly is something we discussed on Food World Order back in September of last year, and that would be D. Landreth Seeds. That would be America's oldest seed company founded in 1784 in Pennsylvania. That's tough to even kind of fathom. And they carry over 900 non-GMO seed varieties. They were hurting for certain several months back, and they did a push and asked for people to buy their seed catalog, which, again, our friends on YouTube.com will check out this catalog from the D. Landreth Seed Company that you can even kind of look in the middle and see. It's almost like veggie porn it's amazing it's a huge thick catalog it was only five dollars and again putting your money where your mouth is and that's maybe a really appropriate saying for food world order is moving your money where you want it to go so you hopefully took the step of taking your money out of the big ridiculous banks this past year thanks to you know the the, the good move of you know move your money in the occupy movement so putting your money where your mouth is, taking it out of those ridiculous banks who, again, fund everything from 
drug trafficking and money laundering and mountaintop removal in my home state of West Virginia to foreclosing on people all around. Take your money out of there and you want to put it more locally. I want to also say, as I, I think I try and say on these Food World Order appearances with James, that I'm not trying to be up here on my high horse like I'm Mr. Atlas. I have my own problems, you know, if, if left to my own devices, of course, you know, like many of you out there, I'd maybe just want to eat a, you know, frozen pizza. But at least hopefully it's, you know, it's an organic frozen pizza from from Amy's, you know, Amy's and Annie's being one of the last few family owned, you know, independent organic food companies. So I'm not trying to be up here, you know, preaching to you like I'm like I'm Mr. Health or that I'm, you know, Jack LaLanne or even Mike Adams of naturalnews.com. So much of Food World Order as the same in all the other sites and all the other kind of subjects that I cover is first and foremost, man, it's I'm trying to educate myself. So I don't I don't ever want to seem like I'm up here saying you should do this and why don't you do that and you're a bunch of sheeple because ultimately as as, as we heard on the previous show here on republicbroadcasting.org how you approach people and how you talk about this kind of information is going to go a long way in whether or not those seeds are going to be planted so let's look at some of the other things on foodworldorder.com as again i i did the pitch for organics to you.org. And we also talked about landrithseeds.com and that fantastic catalog for only $5 that helps support them. And it will educate you about seeds at large and you can order them from there. And even my, my friend Zach Bosart from here in Portland turned me on to another site that I think is, is a more local source of seeds. And I don't have that right in front of me. I apologize. I'll, I'll add the notes a little bit later. But there are ways and there are moves that you can make to, again, it's not going to be a switch. It's not going to, you're not going to change it all overnight. All this crap, as it's been said, wasn't, you know, set forth in one day. They didn't destroy our schools and our water and our food and our banking and all those things in one day. So don't expect you're going to flip a switch and instantly be, I'm super organic, healthy, recycle man and everything's perfect. It's not going to be that way. Ultimately, and that's the thing, and that's really the the balance, I think, of, of trying to live in a city. It's because, you know, I, I like electricity. I like film and the arts and media. That's why it's called MediaMonarchy.com. I've made the decision to kind of exist in this world, but I'm also not going to sell out the things that I, you know, are my kind of core beliefs. So I don't work for corporate things, and I try not to give my money to corporate destructive practices but uh, again my friends i am not on my my soapbox or my high horse trying to trying to teach and preach about anything well i am trying to teach i'm just trying to share information global food prices up in january snapping a six-month downtrend this from the rothschild controlled reuters Global food prices rose in january for the first time in six months and may show another rise for february as concern about bad weather in Maine growing regions boosted grain and vegetable oil values, the United Nations Food Agency said on Thursday. January's increase was not expected to heap as much inflationary pressure on economies as a year ago when prices were climbing toward record highs, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, said ahead of the European Central Bank's decision on interest rates. And we do have this release on FAO.org. And I see that we do have Mike back on the line in Hollywood, Florida. Mike, are you there, sir? I'm here, James. How's it going, man? What's on your mind? Oh, just It's good to be talking to you. I'm a big fan. I've been, uh, I've been listening to you for a while. Awesome. I, I frequently check Media Monarchy and uh, all the sister sites. I listen to James Corbett regularly as well. And um, I just wanted to ask you if you saw Mike Adams uh, released a pretty funny video, TSA Help Wanted animation video. Uh, I, I, no, I haven't seen it yet. I may, you know, it's on, I see so many kind of headlines that I scan quickly and someone will mention something and I go, ah, oh, I, I think I saw that, but no, tell us about it. I think you'd find it funny. It's just, you know, animated. It shows um, actual pictures of TSA gropings and whatnot. And um, I guess it's kind of 
poking fun at that TSA or whatever, but Alex Jones then came out and released a video talking about how Google is censoring it and removing it, where they're not even showing any kind of um, you know nudity or anything that would hmm. you know warrant it being censored. There's much worse stuff on YouTube, but it's been completely taken down and here and there, and people are reposting it and saying you know they're telling people to spread it and whatnot. So I just thought, wondering if you saw that or what you thought about it. No, I haven't seen that. I, I may I'll have to go grab that. And, and and put it out for people, especially if something's trying to be you know push push down. I, that's always the worst right. mistake they can ever make is say, oh, you're not going to be able to crack this code, or you can't see this video. It's just going to make everybody go, oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of a like a, recently there was um, MSNBC took a put out a hit piece on on Gary Franchi. Hmm. Um, I think it was today. Did you hear about this? No. I am. Um, he was he was actually on Alex Jones's show today talking about it, and they were just joking about how the worst thing the mainstream can do now is call attention to someone like Gary Franchi and him supporting Ron Paul and this and that. They're saying, oh, he, these conspiracy 9/11 truthers are supporting Ron Paul, are trying to smear him. But in essence, they're actually just calling attention to the cause and then waking people up because they're so discredited now that anyone who they smear is getting attention and. Alex Jones is joking, saying the best thing you can do is, uh, is uh, just not talk about the whole thing at all and just continue to marginalize like they do. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, uh, it was just pretty funny. You know, I, I and and I, Mike in Hollywood, Florida. I, I appreciate your call so much, and I appreciate your support to Media Monarchy, both both you know monetarily and and just all all of your support. I, I really appreciate it. I had never thought of. I admit it never crossed my mind as long as we're kind of talking about the electioneering. I saw some, you know, report or some headline saying, claiming, watch maybe Ron Paul may get the vice president slot with, with whoever may, may get the get the bit. Have, have you heard that? I actually did. I heard that there was an, actually it was, looking at it right now, they, they posted, um, I think it was, the guy's name was Jack, uh, Berkman of Fox Business on hmm. on um, was talking about how he believes Ron Paul will be on the Republican ticket. Huh. Well, we're we're Good. coming up on the break, Mike. I, I again I appreciate it so very much. And again, out there, folks, one eight hundred three one three ninety four forty three. We have, I believe, one last segment here on Corbett Report Radio. And again, I'm James Evan Pilato, guest hosting from MediaMonarchy.com. It's going to get you, my friends. We are back on the final segment of Corporate Report Radio. I'm your guest host, James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. And as we do, it's the final segment on these Thursday nights. We do the binge and purge from FoodWorldOrder.com. So I'm eating my organic local apple from organics to you.org and let's blast through the february 9th binge and purge seasick yet still docked walmart's new labels tell shoppers what's great for you we can get the quick blip from los angeles times in case you can't tell which foods at walmart are healthful the world's largest retailer will make it obvious right on the package with a great for you label so if, one, you're foolish enough to still be shopping at Walmart, obviously you don't really know what to buy, so they're going to help you with what's great for you. Now, I know they're also now the biggest organic seller in the world because they could be the biggest seller of whatever they want in the world because we've let them destroy our towns and close all our mom and pop stores. But I digress. Gates and the Millions Funding Geoengineering, that's from gmwatch.org. Junk food still plentiful at elementary schools, that's from MSN. 20 foods to give you energy and 30 famous food quotes, those are both from ecosalon.com. And it's a great way, and none of these things, you know, these are all great food. Leafy greens, almonds, walnuts, lean meats, salmon, eggs, whole grains, coffee, tea, beans, Apples, bananas, pumpkin seeds, water with lemon, watermelon, blueberries, red bell peppers, dark chocolate, low-fat yogurt, green smoothies, and hummus are all 20 great foods to give you energy. Taco Bell should learn from a long history of outbreaks and going right along with that from naturalnews.com. While the government discredits raw milk, 
salmonella outbreak restaurants kept secret to protect corporate profits, and that would be the Mexican-style restaurant known as Taco Bell, owned and controlled again by the multinational Yum Brands. China is a fast food nation. Is the economy too fast? That's from CNN Money. An update on GMOs in China from gmwatch.org. And lastly, on the list from newsy.com, virus leaves cruise ship passengers seasick. Now that story ties into a larger theme and meme that I've been tracking on MediaMonarchy.com for the past few weeks. And that is, as we approach the 100th anniversary of the Titanic, we see a lot of these copycat kind of effects and memes happening, whether that's the Costa Concordia disaster or the Papua New Guinea ferry sinking or norovirus on ships abroad. We see this sinking ship, and perhaps it is indicative of the larger situation for the world. I don't want to leave things that that dour, but I also want to throw a quick mention of something James Corbett put up while he was out of town, put up yesterday, or rather two days ago, blackballed how the FBI bends FOIA. And you can get that on CorbettReport.com and BoilingFrogsPost.com. So, my friends, as we wrap up this episode of Corbett Report Radio, and again, I believe this will be the 68th episode my name is James Evan Pilato, the host and webmaster of MediaMonarchy.com. And again, a huge thanks to James for giving me this opportunity. And I implore you guys to check out MediaMonarchy.com. And also the fastest, most immediate source of news coming from me is our Twitter feed at Media Monarchy. I also want to remind folks, tomorrow night, going out with a bang on the week of guest hosts here on Corbett Report is my man, Someone I've gained so much from. That's Richard Grove of TragedyAndHope.com. So a, a huge thanks, my friends, here in closing. Again, I thank Manny running the board. I thank James for giving me the opportunity here on RepublicBroadcasting.org. So as I always say at the end of my shows, I'll tell it right here for you, my friends. Don't hate the media. Become the media. I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, guest hosting Corporate Report Radio on RepublicBroadcasting.org. Thank you so much, and take care. All right. uh, Thanks a lot, James. Thank you, man. (laughs) Yeah, definitely.